Hey guys, welcome today. Let me introduce MC2 LJ Burleson, a new host on The Rundown and my co-host this episode. Thanks MC1. So what's on tap this week? Well this week, we have a couple clips from my interview with a shipmate of mine who's talking about his experience on the Career Mission Program. We're answering a couple of your questions from Twitter, the Keep What You've Earned campaign has a new contest, and a few highlights from a blog on changes coming to women's uniforms. Alright MC2, let's start with our questions. What do we get? Okay, we got a question from Jeremy at Spartan Sailor. Looks like he's asking if sailors can wear metal rank insignia or warfare devices on the Navy NWU, like on the Marine Marprat uniform. Well, that's a great question, and we talked to Uniform Matters and checked the instruction, and the answer is no. For all NWU variants, rank insignias and warfare devices must be embroidered. Now, we're wearing the Marpat uniform like many Fleet Marine Force corpsmen do, the Marines rules apply. So you'll often see those sailors wearing the subdued metal insignia, but those are not authorized on any NWUs. That's good to know. I didn't know that before we looked it up, so thank you, Jeremy, for that question. Next, we have a question from Peter at Pedro Griffin. He wants to know what's the difference between cap and map. The letter M. <laughs> Last week's video went a little bit more in depth, but basically with map, COs have more flexibility to use or return quotas so that fewer quotas go unused. And with the name change, it basically signifies that these meritorious advancements are for the best and brightest sailors in the command. Next, MC1, you talked to Wine One Gordon as he transitioned back from the career intermission program. Mm -hmm. And he basically just talked a little bit about his experience using CIP, and he wanted to share that information for anyone else interested in the program. First, I was in the process of uh, transferring, and I wanted a chance to actually remain in the area to finish up going to the school I was going to. And um, it, I did my research on, uh, on the program, looking at all the variables and stuff. It actually allowed me to actually get the feeling of being a full-time college student. What advice would you have for sailors considering it now so they have kind of a smoother run through than you might have, even though you seem to have pulled it off successfully? <laughs> uh, thanks. Uh, major bumps will probably be financial. Um, financial is a huge, uh, huge factor. Everybody reads about the program and think, hey, it's a great program, let's get into it. Uh, but you, you, know, you don't count for a small stipend um, and you don't count for uh, not having uh, that, that military paycheck that you're, that you're used to uh, getting. Uh, while you're in there. So what I recommend is just sitting down with a financial advisor. Next, there's a new contest out there for the Keep What You Earn campaign. They want artistic or creative sailors to design a poster or slogan for the campaign. Sounds interesting, but what's in it for those sailors? Well, the winning entries will be used throughout the fleet, so that can help sailors stay on the right path. And for the designer, it will look great on the eval or really help any seaside chapter get some extra recognition. Cool. Well, finally, there's a blog out on Navy Live detailing eight important things to know about upcoming and in-progress changes to women's uniforms. You can check it out in this week's Wire. And if you want our weekly Wire newsletter in your inbox, sign up by sending us a note at usnpeople at gmail.com. That's our show for this week. For the Chief of Naval Personnel, I'm MC2 LJ Burleson. And I'm MC1 Elliot Fabrizio. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.